Testing, testing, testing.
I've left the music on in a couple of the other presentations and it worked quite nicely. So I think we're going to have a little bit of lo-fi in the background if that's cool with you guys.
So hello, my name is Joe and I'm the president of Warwick AI and I'm so happy to see all of you here today for our final talk of this Freshers Week. Uh, it's been an exciting last five days and it's been so nice to meet all of you. I've been thinking recently about the life cycle of technologies. I've been thinking about how new systems develop and are adopted and ultimately permeate our culture to the point where they're almost indetachable from ourselves. And naturally, when thinking about these technologies, I've identified trends. It seems to me that technology starts off doubted. People question its validity or its efficacy. They question whether it's going to have any impact. Take blockchain technology, take the internet, which was called a fad in the early 2000s. Take electricity, which had unbelievably had, uh, there were a lot of questions that arose at the start of electricity as to whether it would be useful for anything. And these technologies tend to start off in an infant state with a small number of people surrounding them. And these are experts in their field. And they develop the technology past this stage of doubt to the point where it starts to have applications and starts to slowly, tentatively show results. And eventually people realize, they realize what this technology means. It enters into the mainstream and there's this explosion of accessibility. Suddenly everybody can have mobile internet. Everybody can make transactions on the blockchain. Everybody can use 4G. Take your phone. Does anyone remember having a flip phone and trying to connect to the internet? And it was painfully slow and it never seemed to work. It was incredibly expensive. And then almost overnight, I have 4G on every country in the planet. And naturally, as president of Warwick AI, I spend a lot of time thinking about AI. And I've been thinking, where does AI lie on this timeline? Where does AI stand in this progression of a technology? It's my opinion that in the last two to three years, we've seen the dawn of artificial intelligence in the mainstream. We've seen the transition of AI as a technology only used by the few to a technology available to the masses. And it turns out I'm not alone in this belief. This is something called the democratization of artificial intelligence, and it's something that we're living through right now. So why do I make these claims? Why do I believe that we stand where we stand? Firstly, just look at the technology we have accessible to us. In a single line of code in a, from a library like PyTorch, Keras, or TensorFlow, you can do what AI researchers in the past took months and months to do. These libraries are unbelievably powerful, and you have access to them at your fingertips. If you're not into getting directly involved in the libraries themselves and you just want to use the end products well you can do that too some of the most powerful models that have ever been created are now publicly accessible gpt3 is an open ai model trained on 45 terabytes of text data tens of thousands of hours of compute tens of millions of dollars thousands of hours of research at time all packaged up into a web interface that you can use as a demonstration i just want to show you what i mean by that A demonstration I often use to explain how this model works is uh, just getting it to write a fiction story. So this is text that has never been generated before. This is entirely unique. And this can be used for generation of creative fiction. It can generate jokes. It can generate realistic responses to emails is something that we've been working on. Somebody from Work AI has used this technology to solve first year computer science exams, getting a 2-1 grade. And finally, just look at Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Look at what they've been churning out in the last two years. They are 
absolutely dying to be the medium through which you engage with artificial intelligence. All of these services come pre-existing and ready to go. The Amazon services on the left, like SageMaker, CodeGuru, Lex, personalized poly recognition. Recognition just on its own can take 10,000 hours of video footage and look for your face in it. And it can do that in minutes. DeepRacer can be used to use machine learning to program cars to race straight out of the box with basically no programming experience. All of these technologies exist now and are ready to be used by people even without that much experience. All of the Google services on the right here for document analysis, natural language processing, video intelligence, text to speech, speech to text, text generation, language generation, all of it exists and is ready to be used in lines of code. So what are we doing? What I'd like to do today is I'd like to create a really simple React app. And what I'd like to do is deploy that app to the internet after integrating some Amazon Web Services machine learning libraries and show you that you can go from an empty code editor, a basic starter app, to a fully deployed machine learning based app on the internet in a handful of minutes. And so let's see if we can give that a go. So what I've done is I've created this app in React because it makes it really easy to create web apps. And I've used Amplify because that makes it really easy to deploy stuff to the internet and to integrate existing Amazon services. But I don't want you to worry if you don't understand the code because it's React and it's a, an esoteric language that perhaps you've never used. I'm going to explain what I'm doing and I want you to listen to the words rather than the code. And I don't want you to worry if you don't know about AWS Amplify uh, because that's just a piece of technology we're using to integrate machine learning. If you are interested in knowing exactly how this is done, then if you go on the Warwick AI GitHub, there's instructions and all of the code there. So let's jump in. What I've done is I've created a base React app. You just type npx create React app, and this is the code that it gives you. This is kind of boilerplate code. This is default. And what you can see is in this return, we're returning a little app. If you've done some HTML before, you'll understand there's a little div here and there's gonna be a link with a little uh, logo. So we can go ahead and check out that in the development environment and see what that looks like. This is our base React app that's been created for us. And what we're gonna do is just add a little bit of code to this to integrate some existing um, libraries. So let's go ahead and give that a go. So what I'm gonna do to start with is I'm gonna add the imports for all of the technology that we're gonna use. Oh, is it? Yeah, of course. Sure. Just give me a second. Better? Oh, it's a little bit of cinema vibes. So I'm just going to add our imports up here. And so what I've done here, I've commented everything so you can understand it, but I've just imported React and I've imported Amplify and Predictions, which are Predictions is gonna be the library we use. And you're gonna see how I, how I use Predictions in, in just a moment. So it's gonna delete that. So we've got our imports and then we've done some configuration. All of this is explained in, in the document if you wanna see it. Uh, we've done some configuration, we've set up our config and then we've added an Amazon AI Predictions provider. And that's what we're gonna to use to do our machine learning. So down here, we want to create a little interface. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the existing code because this is just boilerplate that we don't need. And I'm going to add in a little bit of our own code. And I'm going to explain exactly what our own code does to you. So in here, this is what we actually see in the, in the web page. And it's a little bit ugly, so I'm just going to do some formatting. Wait. So what have we got here? Well, we've got a title. We're going to call this app Whose Face Is That? So what's this app going to do? It's going to take a, um, sorry, an image of a celebrity 
and it's going to we're going to upload that image and it's going to identify using some amazon web services libraries who the celebrity is in that image and then i'm going to give you a demonstration of that working so we're going to have a title whose face is that and then we're going to have an input which just takes a file and when that file gets uploaded it's going to call a function all it's going to call is identify from file which is a function we're going to write and then that's where we're going to embed the machine learning and it's going to take place right in front of your eyes so and then just below we're going to just display the image um, so that we can see it and then we're going to display the name of the person if it exists um, and if there are any links that the library found then we're going to put those in too okay so now we need to make this identify from file function so let's go ahead and chuck that in So what am I doing here? What I've done is I've added this function identify from file and it's gonna set the name to searching. We don't know what the name is and we don't have any links yet. So it's gonna set those to blank and then it's gonna take the file that you've uploaded. If no file has been uploaded, it's just gonna exit. And then what we're gonna do is down here, we're gonna do the machine learning. So this is the sort of last section. We're gonna do the use the AWS library to kind of do the magic. Don't worry if you don't understand this code, just, just because it's, uh, it's React and if you spent 10 minutes actually looking at it, you would, you would see what it does. So, let's add the actual intelligence to this. And you're gonna be hopefully surprised at how simple that is. So the reality of machine learning in 2021 is that this is pretty much it. What we're calling is AWS predictions and we're calling the identify function because we want to call it on a file. And we're going to pass that file in the source and we're going to turn on the feature celebrity detection because that's what we're interested in in this app. And then once that's been identified, the dot then takes the result and then it populates celebrity metadata, celebrity data with, some, uh, with the result of the predictions call. And it sets the name if it finds one of the celebrities. So if it finds a celebrity in the image, it's going to set that name. And if it finds some links, some, some URLs, the Wikipedia page or whatever, it's going to set those too. And so that's pretty much it. I want to go and check if we can save that file. And give that an update. While that's loading, what we can do to get this on the internet is we can type, it's compiling at the moment, so I won't type it now. We can type amplify add hosting, and that adds, because I've already pre-configured amplify, I've typed amplify configure to set it, link it up to my Amazon account, and I've typed amplify init to create a new amplify project. I can now just type amplify add hosting, and I can type amplify publish, and that will push it onto the internet under a random amplify domain name, which you'll see in a second. So. While we're waiting for this to compile, before this lecture, I, I pushed it to the internet already. So it's gonna be accessible online, even if, uh, even if my computer's being slow and won't put it directly on my screen. So what we could perhaps do, instead of waiting for it here, is we can, we can test it out on the internet. So I want you to take a photo of this guy with your phone. Whip your phone out and take a photo of this guy. I'm assuming you don't know who it is, and that's the, that's the fun of it. We're going to go and find out. And once you've got a photo of his face, what I want you to do is open up the Amplify app that I just created in those, what, 50 lines of code? And to do that, you can just scan that QR code, and that should pull up the app, and you'll see that it's on some random domain name because I've just, just pushed it. And so if you remember our code, we had a file upload button, which is the one that you can hopefully see. And hopefully that allows you to select an image. And if you upload the image of this person, I wanna see if anybody can identify who it is. Depending on the quality of your, uh, depending on the quality of your image, you might not be able to find. Does anyone know who it is? Chris Sharma, Chris Sharma? do you know who that is? Exactly. 
So this is my favorite rock climber. This is Chris. And uh, very quickly, you can see from what was an empty React app with a couple of lines of code, we added some import statements. We added a little bit of HTML to, to structure the website. And then we added a little function called identify from file. And then we typed amplify add hosting and amplify publish. And we pushed that to the internet. And very quickly, you can see what's possible. This is a trivial example. You're never going to change the world by making an app that you can point at Netflix and find out which celebrities are in your Netflix TV show. The point that I'm trying to emphasize here is that following the tutorial that we've written and put on the GitHub takes you 45 minutes and you can have a face recognition based system on the internet rapidly. Not only can you develop this system, you can develop speech to text systems using exactly the same method. You can develop video analysis solutions that look through thousands of hours of footage. You can develop a system that has a webcam and identifies the features of somebody's face and which could be used, for example, on, on doors to accept or reject people. There are endless possibilities to what you could develop in 50 lines of code using existing machine learning libraries. And there are so many guides out there that allow you to use these technologies, even if you have basically no experience. And so what I'd like to talk to you about is what this potentially means for us. What does it mean that anyone can now utilize machine learning technology? So this process is called the democratization of AI. And I want to talk about the pros and the cons of this. Can anybody straight off the bat explain why this might be a bad idea does anybody have any thoughts any ideas yeah exactly so there are plenty of malicious purposes for machine intelligence has anyone heard of the uh social credit system in china so the social credit system in china uses heavily uses face recognition to in security cameras to identify people and associate them with their credit account. And then that can be used to add or remove credit from a citizen. And having poor credit, for example, by doing things like jaywalking, crossing the street when you're not supposed to, can result in you not being able to leave the country, not being able to take flights, uh, having lower priority for social services and things like that. So potentially malicious purposes, or not malicious, but uh, morally ambiguous purposes. Did you have a point as well? Basically that. Exactly. So there's that. There's active malice. But another problem is that machine learning in general has a problem at its foundation. And that's the problem of unintended consequences. And they mostly stem from things like bias. When you train a system, there is an inherent bias in the data set that you provide to that system because the data is usually scraped from places like the internet, which are not completely diverse or representative. And so just in the data that you train these systems with, you introduce bias. And if you're a machine learning expert that understands that, then you can potentially spend a significant amount of time researching the impact of that bias on your product and you're aware of all of these problems related to bias and machine learning and you can potentially mitigate them that comes with experience and that comes with knowledge of what these problems are and how they manifest if you suddenly give the power of artificial intelligence to tens of thousands or millions of unexperienced inexperienced people that have no understanding of bias or the implications of what it really means to deploy intelligent technology into society at large, then the unintended consequences could be massive. Not to be all doom and gloom, what are the benefits of wider access to these tools? So I've come up with three that I think are the main main points. 
by reducing the barrier to entry, we allow a massive range of perspectives into artificial intelligence. Currently, AI researchers are all Silicon Valley based white 30 year old males by allowing more people access to intelligent technology what you do is you open up the conversation to different types of people suddenly you have people from lesser economically developed parts of the world using machine intelligence to solve problems that matter to them instead of just using machine intelligence to improve your uber algorithm or to make people click more adverts on facebook the second benefit of the democratization of ai is that it reduces the cost of these ai solutions oftentimes you have an ai solution that could be massively beneficial to people in certain parts of the world but if you only have as one 2015 paper suggested 10,000 people that have the sufficient skills to develop machine intelligence technology then the cost of these solutions is going to be prohibitive by opening up the playing field and reducing the barriers to entry to ai you can reduce the cost of ai solutions and then they can propagate across the planet to places that need to use this intelligent technology for for example management of water supplies or aerial drone photography to analyze crop yields and things like that so by reducing the cost we increase the number of people that can benefit from this technology and the third point which combines the first two points is a slightly utilitarian perspective which suggests that by reducing the barriers to entry and the costs we can increase the speed of adoption of ai technology so that we can solve these problems quicker using machine intelligence and I could easily have put that point on the other slide, but I decided to be a, an optimist. And I could have put that on the other slide because we don't necessarily know what it means that we're increasing the speed of adoption of machine intelligence. This is a technology that's been around in the main for 10 years, and we are driving its adoption at unprecedented rates. Nobody knows what that entails. Nobody knows what that means, but the best thing we can do is actively engage with the technology, actively understand what we're doing and what we're working with, and hopefully make a positive impact on the outcome. Thank you so much for listening. It's been a pleasure, and I hope that that was informative. And if you have any questions after, I would be more than happy to answer them. Thank you so much for coming and listening. Cheers, guys. Are there any questions on what I've spoken about or just about work AI in general and what we're doing? Yeah. So I didn't get involved in AI until first year of uni. I was approached by a friend who asked me if I wanted to join work AI society. And I said, that would be cool. And I turned up and I was the only member. There was just three exec and me. And so uh, we immediately got to work sort of doing research and finding speakers and finding people to come and um, getting involved in creating things. And since then, it's just been the main thing that I do. My work is now AI. My degree is now AI. My time outside of work and degree is now work AI. So it's just something that's absorbed a lot of my life. Yeah. Yeah, so at Work AI, we have a bunch of projects running. And in those projects, you there's a lots, of, lots of different things going on. But we'll engineer systems from the ground up, um, simple systems. We haven't made any libraries before. That's an interesting one. I think we had, a, um, we had a thought about making a genetic algorithm library that could be used to like apply genetic solutions to um, what would be like maximization problems but we've never actually capitalized on that but that would be really interesting a project based around making a library for 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 wider public use uh but yeah there are also courses and things uh intro to neural nets if if, if you're looking for an introduction to this kind of this kind of thing um intro to neural nets intro to computer vision intro to ml uh, all things that we offer so not quite libraries and things but it's around that sort of vein are there any other questions about projects or getting involved in AI and projects at work AI or potentially 
is getting involved in these sorts of things. Anyone? Yes. We got loads of stuff for beginners. So we, we were talking about this the other day. How can we get people involved that have no knowledge? And what we came up with, there was this idea where we'd have a pipeline of, um, we'd, we'd line up our projects and courses in such a way that you could go from um, zero Python knowledge to using convolutional neural nets for cl image classification after 12 weeks. So the idea is that we you first take part in a course, which is an introduction to Python, five weeks. And then you take part in, part in a mini project, which is two weeks. Um, of applying your Python skills to real image classification problems in a clever way, but not really in a machine learning way. And then you do an introduction to neural nets course, which is three weeks. And then you do a project, which is two or three weeks of um, guided project, a guided project, two or three weeks of image classification with CNNs. And so that, if you followed that pathway of those four things, you would go from week zero, having zero knowledge of Python to the end of week 12, making an image classifier classify using uh, convolutional neural nets. So we've thought about this, and I think that would be the best way. We're dropping all of the sign up links this weekend for things like that, for courses, for projects. They're all going to be on the Discord uh, in the announcements channel. So if you see something called the beginner pipeline, that sounds like something that you might want to get involved in. Um, if you already know Python, but you have no AI experience, then maybe you want to skip the first five weeks of Python and just join um, when the first project starts. And then you can do the introduction to neural nets course and then the project at the end. So the beginner pipeline is something I'd recommend to you. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're, this year we're just working with Python because we don't really have the resources or the, the people to deal with multiple languages. This year we're using PyTorch and Python as our sort of main infrastructure. Um, uh, but if you get involved in advanced projects or intermediate projects, then the decision, the, the tech stack is your choice. So because those advanced projects are being led by student teams, we will guide in the choice of technology, but we won't have a final say. The project lead for that project has the final say in what sort of uh, technology is used. So if you were working on a two-man project, uh, two-person project, then you know, as long as your teammate was happy to use Perl, you could start doing machine learning in Perl. I wouldn't recommend it, but it's you know, it's up to you. So yeah. Yes. If you check out the Discord and you head to the resources channel, we've made a start in there putting uh, the kind of outside work AI resources. So that includes a list of 12 different uh, online courses you can do in machine learning, reinforcement learning, deep learning. Uh, it involves countless YouTube series that you can get involved in. Um, three blue, one brown has a really good introduction to machine learning course, which is three hours. And so, when we provide projects and courses, what we're going to do is we're going to have some kind of recommended reading and videos and things at the start that will help you to kind of uh, prep for those those things. So, yeah, take a look at the resources channel in, in the Discord. There's some stuff in there. And then look out for the in the project specs uh, or in the course specs or whatever. There will be recommended reading and things just before the courses. Yeah, any questions? Yeah. Yeah, of course. So... If you head to warwick.ai, then you will end up somewhere here. If you head to warwick.ai, you will end up here. Right there. Um, so you can click join the Discord there, and that will allow you to connect. And then once you're in the Discord, that's where all the announcements come out. That's where all the project sign-up links get dropped, and all of those sorts of different things. So yeah, I would recommend that you get in there for for getting involved. You can also join the society, which I'd recommend because you can't get involved in projects, courses, and things like that until you're an official member, which you can click the second link for. That's free, but it's just a, a formality. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of NLP based projects. Um, a lot of GPT-3 stuff recently, just because it's kind of the state of the art in um, NLP right now. So we're using that for three or four projects. Um, 
NLP in general without GPT-3. We have a couple of two projects running um, on that front. Are you interested in NLP? Yeah, I've not done yeah, Okay, cool. Well, there might be some, um, if you check out the uh, projects page, yeah. you can have a look at some of those. Or if you can't find anything that's NLP based enough, you can check out the project suggestion form, which is uh, going to drop in the Discord tonight. And that's where we're taking projects from students and we're launching them into their own projects where we'll help, if you want to, we'll help recruit people uh, to pursue whatever objective it is that you're trying to pursue. So um, we've had one NLP task that was suggested to someone, uh, suggested yesterday by a student, where we're going to be using um, NLP to create a chatbot that speaks to you in another language so that you can practice your language skills and so that was a student suggested project that's now going to get launched into a real project because we liked it so much um, and that will be yeah available to to sign up for and to get involved with and we'll, we'll guide the creation of that so uh, if you can't find something that interests you suggest something yeah. any other questions yeah Yeah, so we're going to split them 50-50. They're either going to be in person in this lecture room or a lecture room like this, preferably this one. It's quite nice. Or they're going to be online. So there will be one or the other, and we'll decide beforehand. We have to offer some online courses because we have people that are not in the country. And we can't do 50-50 because it just confuses things. People, we, we would either like everyone to be in person and we'd like everyone to be online. And so we will decide that before the course gets launched. But if you're interested in signing up for courses, the links also drop this weekend. So have a look out for those ones. Any other thoughts, feelings, opinions, stories? So that really depends. Uh, we're going to have project meetups. So if you get involved in a real project, then there'll be project meetups pretty much every week after that project starts. And so in that case, every week. In terms of socials, we're probably going to have a couple of socials throughout the term. So there'll just be meetups between 10, 20 people. And you can get together and discuss AI with a bunch of other uh, different people. That will be sort of sporadically spread across the term. Uh, so there'll be two or three of those. And then when we do courses, we'll probably meet up as well. So if you get involved in, for example, our AI safety course, which is directed at kind of um, more philosophically minded and humanities based students, then that's going to be a, there's going to be about 10 to 12 of us are going to meet every week to discuss AI safety, long term trajectories, future implications of advanced machine intelligence for our species, that sort of stuff um, every week. So, yeah, it depends what you get involved in, but there's no kind of set structure. It's, it's really dependent. Yeah. When does it happen? Well, I'm currently recruiting for it. So I'm just like feeling out the people that would be most interested in that kind of thing uh, because it's it's closed. It's limited to 10 to 12 people because it's the first time we've run it and we want to have a sort of close knit community of people. So um, if you're interested, DM me on Discord, uh, send me a message and I will uh, get back to you with, a, with an invite link. But yeah. GPT-3, yes. If we can use existing technology, we generally do. So for example, like GPT-3 is just silly powerful. And so it would not make sense to try and engineer something to match GPT-3 when we can just use that. But there are times where we get project specs in that we can't find existing solutions for. Uh, and so we do have to come up with a bespoke solution. And that would probably be 50% of the projects. So um, there's a project spec that we're working on that we've been given a spec by a company and we have to come up with a end-to-end -end solution, a pipeline, which is going to involve probably four machine learning components. And we think we could probably solve two of them with AWS libraries and GPT-3. And then the other two are going to have to be um, bespoke and made by us. So where we can get away with using, you know, systems that have been engineered with 10 million pounds worth of compute we're going to use those uh, but where we can't we engineer our own systems yeah we actually don't um not directly there is a uh, work data science society and so we're going to be collaborating with them on various projects um but those details still need to be sort of formalized 
but there'll be a sort of data science component to a lot of different projects but there's no like specific you know for example um like match betting and that kind of statistical analysis of uh, like horse race betting and trying to figure out you know there's none of that directly running but there will be kind of components of different projects that need a data science perspective it's, that's not what you study no you study cs but you're just interested in data science yeah so but yeah questions yo <laughs> that's a great question it's all exec only at the moment um so there might be a potential t-shirt drop in the near term future you prefer in t-shirts or yeah you like the t-shirts or the hoodies um hoodies are uh currently exact everything's exact only at the moment but there are two ways you can go about changing that either you can get involved in the t-shirt drops i think t-shirts will be only sold to people that are directly involved in courses or projects so it won't be to the, sort of the wider audience um or you can get on the exec team and there are a couple of ways you can do that so we're expanding due to the just sheer number of people that we've taken in this year we're expanding our exec team by about four well by four people and so those um sign ups are going to be open this week and so you could get on the exec team that way and then by default you get the you get the merch or there are fresher roles available which are not direct exec roles but they're um for research positions so we need researchers to take tasks like for example um specking out a new project somebody comes to us and says we want to make a project that uses um natural language processing to improve the buyer seller experience on e-commerce websites something like that then we'd need researchers to go and flesh out that kind of idea into a project spec and um yeah check the viability or for example we might want to look at um lethal autonomous weapons is something we're looking at at the moment and so researchers would be heavily involved in sort of looking into lethal autonomous weapons and, and the current situation and um potentially warwick uni's warwick uni's uh um involvement in lethal autonomous weapons that kind of research so yeah one way is get involved in the exec join the research team and the second way is to get involved in projects and potentially i'm not 100 percent sure on the details wait for the t-shirt drop in the future for projects members but um i'm so i can't give you any concrete facts about merch because it's it's um a little bit up in the air at the moment exclusive it's like our supreme drops like except more more exclusive yeah yeah 100 percent uh if you have sort of if you have the drive and determination and the ability to solve problems yourself then that's all that really matters you need to be able to be given a spec or a, an idea and creatively think about that idea and take that further find out perhaps what's been done on that task before find out more think about what we could potentially do with that in the future and um thoroughly sort of analyze the problem and so if you're looking for kind of practice in um for projects that come up in the future for example in computer science you have a thesis project you also have a um, an engineering project in second year You're looking for practice on on in sort of um the development of those sorts of things then it's a fantastic opportunity but yeah you don't need direct ai experience as long as you have the motivation to sort of discover things yourself because uh, you'll pick up a lot of it as you as you go and it's hard to know exactly what you're going to be involved in because as a researcher you could be given one of 10 different tasks it would only be one or two um of them it wouldn't be all of them it would be say for example you do some research on a project or write an article on this topic um or something along those lines so you don't need direct AI experience but the sign ups for that drop this weekend as well so if you're interested it'd be really nice to 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 have you we'll have some interviews and we'll hash it out any other questions anything else anything else anything else i think that is us done thank you so much for coming guys it's been a real pleasure if you need anything warwick.ai join the discord at me joe and i would love to talk to you it's been real thank you guys if you have any questions feel free to come up and we can chat
Hi there. Uh, I woke up and then went back to sleep, overslept, got here late. That's all right. So, A, broadly, what did I miss in the first half an hour? And B, is the presentation of someone? Oh, yeah, fantastic. So, um, you missed me talking about how you can use, you can very easily these days integrate machine learning technology into web apps and then deploy them to the internet very quickly. And that's interesting because it means that everybody now has access to machine intelligence and everybody can use it. And that's really exciting, but also really scary. That's the kind of summary of the, uh, of the conversation. I just showed a little demonstration of deploying a web app to the internet and then people trialed it out. I, just to, I was there when you were talking about the courses. Is that worth doing? Uh, courses are also important. If you want to get involved in, in courses, that's uh, a good way of... Yeah, so, so I think you missed the, the building of the web app. That was just a little demonstration I showed. But yeah, if you want to, I guess the salient point would be that there are um, projects like this you can get involved in. If you want to learn a little bit more about machine learning and AI, there are courses you can get involved in. Uh, if you don't know as much and you want intro courses. Uh, so it really depends on your skill level. Um, so it's, it's really up to you. Are you in the Discord? Uh, uh, yes. Sir. Okay, cool. So in the next few days, everything's going to be dropping, all the sign-up links, all the sort of uh, project spec guides and everything. So if you just take a look at those, see which one takes your fancy and then sign up to something. Um, yeah, that would be... How far does the intro to Python go? It goes from zero knowledge to classes and object-oriented Python. Okay, if I know what you want to do in Java, and you can... So can figure it out, then you don't need to do it. Okay. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend doing the intro to Python course if you have, a, if you have any programming experience. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. If you've got any programming knowledge, I wouldn't bother because Python's very easy to pick up. The syntax is super easy. So yeah. But yeah, have a look on the Discord. Yeah. That's all right. That's no stress. I can't believe you're cheating on us with WFS. It's unbelievable. Oh, unreal. I was going to ask, what is the name of the company that is cyber security company? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and um, you were saying something about internship opportunities. Oh, 100%. Yeah, so do you have any programming experience? Yeah. So okay. Sure. So if you send me a DM on Discord, I can give you some more details. That'd be great. Um, yeah. Right now I'm just looking for like investment banks with like software engineering. Sure. Open. But there's like not many available, so I wasn't really sure like internship wise what I can do. So that'd be like great help. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Send me over your information, and I'll let you know if. Uh, well, yeah, and I'll just have a chat with you. No worries, not a problem. 100. percent Yeah, yeah. Send me a message. Hey. Uh. Hey. Um. You access to GPT free? Is it not like restricted? It is restricted, but we have access as a society. So if you need access, you can always come through. And uh, funded by the society, so we we provide the credit. Okay. So if you're interested in getting involved, then feel free to send me a message, and I'll I can get you access if you need it. Cool. Yeah, it no worries. Thanks for no stress. Thanks for coming, guys. Hey. Uh. Yeah. I'm actually an exchange student. Fantastic. Uh, business uh, administration and management. Amazing. And it's sort of like I picked a few modules back in my back in Germany. Sure. And we're talking about you learn a little bit of German, right? Yes. So when I was uh, 12, I started learning German at school. And then I started learning German until about 18. And now I've got a Spanish girlfriend, so I have to learn Spanish. And, and my Spanish and my German have kind of mixed up a little bit. But yeah. It's, uh, I really wanted to study in Munich. Uh, yeah. when before university, I wasn't going to go to Warwick. I was going to go to Munich, and then it all got a little bit confusing and complicated, and then I wasn't really confident enough with my German, and then I decided to come to Warwick. But in the future, I'm going to move to Germany to yeah, continue sure. learning German. 100% yeah. because it's just the, the atmosphere there for yeah. in terms of technology. I think especially in Munich, mm -hmm. the tech, tech scene is quite is, is, is growing, and it's, it's interesting. So... Um, yes, I will, yeah, that's really nice to know. Are you interested in getting involved in, in Warwick AI? Sure, yeah, because I've, um, I've attended a few modules okay. in Germany, um, dealing with AI, cool. and I've already, like, um, I've written a paper about AI. Fantastic. It's kind of um, a mixture between, like, business topics and AI and the potentials of it. And my uh, bachelor thesis, because I'm in my final year, yeah. actually is also about hybrid intelligence. So I have the mixture and the potentials between AI and human intelligence. That's really interesting. And therefore, 
I'm only gonna be here for one term, unfortunately, because I wanted to come here last year, but due to COVID, I didn't make it. Sure. And I'm only gonna be here for like 10 weeks or something like that to mid December. And I was wondering whether um, it would make sense for me to join one of the beginner courses, even though I might not be here. Or so what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna have the dates um, up on the. Discord over the weekend, so you'll see the dates, and then if they line up, I'd definitely take them. Uh, but be aware of the content. Maybe it's too basic or it's too complicated. Yeah. Just check. I've been a tutor for basics of uh, JavaScript. Okay. I'm really interested in Python. Sure. I've always wanted to learn it, but it was like, oh, I'm going to do it next year, and now I'm going to do it next month. If you know a programming language already, I'd say that the intro to Python course is probably too basic. Because it literally goes over like what is a variable, what is a for loop, what is an if statement. All you need to know is, okay, you need to start. What I've so I've learned ten programming languages at my over the course of my degree, and the way that it works now is once you have a one language really well cemented, then the next language all you have to do is start solving a problem, and then you go, okay, so to solve this problem, I need a for loop and an if statement. And then you Google how to do a for loop in Python, and then you how to do an if statement because you already know what an if statement is, you already know what a function is, you already know what a class is. Yeah. So you don't need to start learning programming from the beginning. You just start programming and then go fuck. Well, I don't know how to do a function, so you Google how to write a function. And I've done this every time I go back to my company. Sorry, I'm just going to end the live stream so that I'm not. Talking